Peace, peace, this is your host, Selah Shalom, and this is a Cosmon teachings in the words of Jehovah and his angel ambassadors from the Cosmon Bible of Waspi. And the topic of discussion today is called Entering the Kingdom of God. Now, in the scriptures, in the Bible, the main reference of entering the kingdom of God is in the New Testament with the story of Jesus. Mainly all the prophets spoke about maintaining the law, statutes, and commandments, but they never spoke about entering the kingdom. The only one in the Bible who really spoke about entering the kingdom of God is Jesus. But now, when we analyze the scriptures, you have many gods in the scriptures. So when we're talking about entering the kingdom of God, there's many gods, kingdoms we could enter. So how do you know that you're entering the right God's kingdom? Because in the scriptures you have the God Baal, you have Shemesh, the sun god, you have Ashtaroth, the goddess of Persia, then you got Dagon, Tammuz, Osiris, El, Isis, you got all these gods, these deities, and they got their heavenly kingdoms. So which god, kingdom, are we going to enter out of all these gods? That's one question that you should ask yourself when you read the scriptures. Speaking of the Bible. And another thing. When we're talking about entering the kingdom of God. God is a title. And that's not a name. So the next question would be. What is the name. Of your God. And as I just mentioned previously. I just ran down a couple names of deities. Of gods. Baal. Ashtaroth. Shemesh. Dagon. El. Osiris. Isis. Are those the kingdoms that we're going to enter after we die? Because it doesn't distinguish what kingdom of God we should go to. It just says, through the scriptures of uh, the New Testament, Jesus said you're going to go to the Father's kingdom. But which father are we talking about? The scriptures say, Satan is the father of all lies. See that? So we've got to weigh the option of these things. Without, instead of just believing it, you know what I'm saying, without questioning it. Now, how do you determine the correct kingdom of God? Now, as I showed you through Owaspi, I showed you how angels that are in service of the Creator, I showed you what their labor is, which is in service of those beneath in service of others and progression and education to progress off the planet into the etherian realms that's the labor of the creator and his angels but for the labor of angels that declare themselves as gods claiming to be the creator their objective is to populate their kingdoms with the spirits of the dead and to make subservient slaves of those spirits worshipping this false god so you could enter many kingdoms of God of the Elohims, the gods And not being the correct one. You could end up being a subservient slave to the God who you thought was the creator. And couldn't have found out he's a false God. And you may acknowledge that a thousand years being in this person's kingdom. But when you serve the creator, who is not in the image of a man or a God being the omnipotent, no beginning, no ending. That's the Creator. But the angels in service of the Creator 
who have the authority and the title as God and Lord Gods and Lords their duty is to lift up angels and mortals beneath them and help them progress this is how you distinguish what angels are in service of the Creator and what angels are in service of a false god and when you have when you look at religion and you look at some of the Christians and you look at some of the sects like the Jehovah Witnesses when they come knock at your door and try to convince you to join the church that's an example of the workings of the false gods because they're trying to capture souls they're trying to capture mortals while alive on earth so when you die in this belief you're going to become a subservient slave to the person who established Jehovah Witness and that sect and that belief system likewise with the Baptists likewise with the um, Seventh Day Adventists likewise with all the denominations that fall into Christianity and the same thing goes for Islam but those who are in service to the Creator are not going to convince you first to follow any deity I'm not going to convince you to follow a God I'm going to convince you to help yourself like how I addressed a health issue try to show you and give you pointers on how to better your health that's in service of the Creator to purify one's own self and if I were trying to convince you to believe in Jesus and if you don't believe in Jesus you're going to go to hell that's the workings of the false god likewise with Islam if I try to tell you that if you don't believe in Muhammad you're gonna go to hell that's the workings of the false god I'm showing you how to identify these things while alive on earth because when you cross over you're gonna be faced with the same challenges or you're gonna already have a belief system and you're gonna be a subservient slave in that heavenly kingdom without questioning it just serving, being a servant. So this is the difference on which kingdom you're going to enter when you cross over, the kingdom of the different gods. Now throughout my vid you may hear me say true God. That term means that that's the rightful leader, the rightful ruler on the throne. Because the creator anoints who sits on the throne. So when I say true God, that's the rightful ruler of the throne. When I say a false God, that's somebody claiming to be what true God is. He wasn't rightfully assigned to his position. He authorized his own position and authority, which makes him false, because he wasn't authorized by the Creator. And you can go back and look at the uh, video I did called The Title and Ranks of Angels to give you a breakdown of the, 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 uh, the terms God, Lord God, Lord, Guardian Angel giving you a breakdown of the title and ranks of angels within the heavenly kingdom showing you how it works which the Bible doesn't contain this is just an example to show that just because one person confess on entering the kingdom of God does not necessarily mean that's the correct God it's deeper than the surface and with that, I'd like to say peace and blessings. Shalom.